Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, they think the old music is better, but I'm not so sure. And today we're going to continue the uh, countdown of favorite albums. So I'm not saying these are the best. These are my 30 favorite. And we're going to do it in three videos this time to break it down into uh, 10 albums at a time. So we've done the years 2000 through 2004. If you haven't seen those uh, uh, videos, check those out. And uh, so today let's get into counting down 30 through 21. And let me bring up my spreadsheet here. And I do want to talk about some honorable mentions. So I've got uh, six albums here that I like but did not make my final cut and i'll talk about them very briefly one is uh lucinda williams live at the fillmore uh, i love lucinda williams and it's a terrific live album uh you know when i was on wikipedia i was um reading about um uh robert Criscow's comment on this and he pointed out that there are 11 tracks from her previous album world without tears no new songs, no covers. And I kind of agree with that assessment. It's um, kind of a retread of her 2003 album. So that one didn't quite make it. Another one and the sort of sort of Americana thing is, you know, I'm a big Bruce Springsteen fan, Devils and Dust. Good album, not great album. Um, sometimes it hits a spot, but I... I don't find myself turning to this particular Springsteen album that often. Another album that I uh, like quite a bit, uh, Marianne Faithful Before the Poison. Marianne Faithful's from the 1960s, and she's developed this really raspy voice. Uh, most of the songs are written and produced by either PJ Harvey or Nick Cave. And there's a lot of really good stuff on here, um, but it just missed the cut. Uh, the New Pornographers, Twin Cinema. So, I, you know, I like The New Pornographers. Um, but I think I had a revelation going through this um, uh, list here that I'm a bigger fan of Nico Case than I am A.C. Newman. And there's a lot of A.C. Newman on here. He's so talented, so talented. But I don't know. Uh, Twin Cinema just... You know, it's kind of a power pop album for the 21st century, and it's I recognize it as a really good album. Uh, now, these next two, you know, this could, uh, these are albums that probably would be on most people's uh, favorite list. And they're both albums that I like, but I'm going to briefly explain why they didn't, didn't make the cut. One is uh, Kanye West, late registration uh what i had the college dropout as one of my favorites and uh, i think kanye will show up again on my list but late registration is an album that i i really like about half of it and about half the songs don't you know relate to it so of the singles i like about half the singles and uh there's a lot of really good deep cuts on here but it just missed and then the last honorable mention that i have and this one really hurts uh this is anthony and the johnstons i am bird i am a bird now every time i put this album on and i i hear the first track hope there is someone i just think oh man this is going to be a great album his voice is so beautiful and the piano is so beautiful and then every time i listen to the album it just, I don't know, it just seems to me like Anthony has been um, writing the same song his whole career. <laughs> it's just a little bit too one note. Uh, the lyrics are all pretty much in the same vein. And I don't know, I just, I find myself losing interest in the album before it's over. But boy, it sure starts off with a bang. Okay, so let's get into the top 30. And if you followed these before, you know that I include anthologies. So I've got a lot of, this is kind of a weird year. It's, it's a heavily loaded year, but I've got some international albums on my list. I've got some live albums on my list and my anthologies, which usually are way at the top. A lot of those anthologies are lower here. They're still, 
you know, great, but there's uh, single standing albums that I love from this year that are that I just prefer. So coming in at number 30 is an anthology and it's Natalie Merchant retrospective 1995 to 2005. So this only covers 10 years of her career, which is, I believe, four albums. And there's an interesting bonus disc that you can get on Spotify that has a lot of her uh, miscellaneous stuff. Uh, real good. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I loved Tiger Lily when it came out in the 90s. And then this takes just three to four tracks from Ophelia and Motherland and her, you know, her first four albums. And I like Natalie Merchant quite a bit. Uh, yeah, classic 90s rock uh, going into up through the year 2005. And yeah, you know, I technically saw her once, kind of. Um, I went to see 10,000 Maniacs in concert and she came on and did about three songs and then started crying and left the stage and they came out and said, sorry, her aunt died and she's too fair clamped to perform and we didn't get our money back. So I was a little pissed off at her about that, but I've forgiven her over the years. So Natalie Merchant, um, yeah, I think just uh, a great singer songwriter from the 90s um coming in number 29 is a prog rock reunion album this is von der Graf generator one of the pioneering prog rock bands in the 60s along with uh king crimson and procol harem and some of those other people and they had not done an album in a studio album in over 25 years they reformed in uh and recorded this in 2004 it took over a year for the album to come out they're from manchester england i had the opportunity to see peter hamill in concert one time just by himself on keyboards and guitar no band it was a great show uh i, I love this now what holds this back a little bit is it's a double cd and the second cd is all improvisations uh, a lot of them instrumental and it's a good disc, uh, but it does weigh it down a little bit. I prefer the first disc and the two songs written by Hamill are, I think, the best songs, especially a song called Nutter Alert, N-U-T-T-E-R. And Nutter is anyone who's a little crazy in their, in their thinking. And um, it's a vicious song. It's wonderful. Yeah, be on the lookout for Nutters. <laughs> I love it. So Von der Graf Generator Present. So I guess they just called it Present because it was a reunion album. And uh, the band's in fine form. It's uh, the original lineup and they all, they've been through several different lineups, but they came together for this one. They reformed with original band members and that includes the sax player. And it's, it's, it's really good, uh, but it's not everyone's cup of tea because Peter Hamble's voice is not, it's not, a, not everyone's favorite voice, but I'm a big fan of Van der Graaff. Uh, but I guess I prefer some of their other albums, but this is still a, a strong entry. Coming in at number 28 is another anthology, and it's low on this list because it's imperfect. It's, uh, I'm a big fan of early, early Robert Palmer. Uh, this is the very best of the island years, and this is my preferred period of Robert Palmer. Um, he then signed to another record label, and so this is just the first maybe eight albums. But it's got some omissions. They don't have Spanish Moon on here, which to me is a real cardinal sin that that song's not on there. And so uh, I actually put together my own The Very Best of the Island Years, and I swapped out about four or five tracks with other favorites of mine but oh that early robert palmer if you haven't heard it uh he was funky back in the days and playing with the band little feet and the meters and it's really good stuff and uh yeah I'd like to say it's an imperfect anthology so it's a little bit lower down on the list here but i love the uh 70s period of robert palmer before 
he got big and you know addicted to love and all that that those are good tracks i enjoy those but i i really have a sweet spot for his uh, discography before he became famous number 27 is a uh international world album this is uh, amadou and mariam Demanchi abamako so this is an album produced by manu chow who is a french spanish um artist with his own career in discography um amadou and mariam are from the capital city of mali in northern africa and amadou is a really good guitar player uh they are also sometimes nicknamed the blind couple of Mali because they met uh they actually met at a school for the blind when they were younger and fell in love and got married and so they are um and they both had sight at birth um I think one of them was measles and I'm not sure what the other one was but they both lost their sight when they were um children or teens and then they met at this blind school and this is really um killer stuff i don't know that it's their uh best album um about three years later they put out an album called welcome to molly and we'll see how that fares when i get around to the 2008 list but uh yeah there's some tasty tasty um guitar on here if you're not familiar with music from molly molly is considered the birthplace of the blues and uh these guys are great um Manu Chow doesn't uh, ruin the album. He's got a couple touches on there that blend pretty well with them, but he he pretty much stays out of the way and just plays guitar and produces the album. Coming in number 26 is another anthology. I told you they're all kind of low on my list here, most of them. And I have to explain, and this is a hard one for me to pronounce. The album is called Booyah. Booyah Bais, The Best of Fish. Booyah Bais is a, like an alphabet soup. And Fish is the uh, uh, original lead singer of the band Marillion. So I got another prog rock album in here. I do like certain prog rock. Um, so he quit the band after, I think, four albums. And I, I'm i just a bigger fan of Fish's solo career than I am the post-Fish um, Marillion albums. But uh, good stuff. He, you know, his albums, I would say most of his solo albums are imperfect. So just selecting these uh, cuts over his entire career is perfect for me. Uh, it's a double disc, so it's a lot of, a lot of music. It's split into two discs one is called the balladeer disc and the other the rocketeer disc and actually i think that works i don't normally like that kind of concept i'd rather they just uh put the combination of styles on there but the second disc rocketeer it's it's fierce it's got a lot of uh lyrics uh, anti-war lyrics and so forth and he's really impassioned and it it kind of flows really nice as a second disc. So Fish's solo career, you know, he's not big in the United States of America, but he's done very well in the UK. So for my UK fans out there, Fish. Um, and there are three Marillion tracks on here. They're three biggest hits. And then um, there are no re-recordings on here. Um, nothing too bizarre, just taking, you know, two, three tracks from all of his albums and putting together this excellent, excellent double disc of his solo career. So this is the fish that I want to listen to, because like I say, his albums, I would say, I don't, I don't think he ever made a perfect album. Uh, but when you collect his best tracks, hmm, listen to a song like Big Wedge. Hmm really great stuff so but you but you gotta like prog if you don't like prog yeah but he's trying to do this kind of prog pop thing and i think he's very successful at it number 25 another anthology and this is a band that was big when i was just a little kid so i didn't know anything about them it's the band cream with eric clapton ginger baker and jack bruce 
This is the double CD Gold. They put out a bunch of albums called Gold with different artists. This is really good. So they did an interesting thing on here. A lot of the Cream albums would contain live cuts. They would just mix studio and live on an album. And on here, what they do, oh, well, then, then when they broke up, they put out a couple live albums. And so w what the people who anthologized this CD did was they put all the studio stuff on disc one and they put all live stuff on disc two. And I think that works well. I think it's nice to either listen to the studio cuts or listen to the live cuts. So it breaks the albums up, makes for a more interesting listen. And, um, you know, I, I don't know if I'm a huge Cream fan, but there are days when I think Ginger Baker was the best drummer ever. Yep, I said it. Better than Neil Peart or Keith Moon or John Bonham. And like I say, there's days I feel that way. But Ginger Baker, if you've never seen the documentary Beware Mr. Baker, oh, that is interesting. Um, so Ginger Baker, rest in peace. Now Jack Bruce, rest in peace. So Eric Clapton's the only member of the band still alive. But this is a, it's a really nice, uh, I, I, you know, their albums were a little imperfect too. So an anthology is the way to go. Um, if I were to make a list of my favorite albums from the 60s, I probably wouldn't have any cream on there. So here we are in 2005 with an anthology that hits the spot for me. It's uh, uh, perfect. It's almost too long as a double disc, but a single disc wouldn't be enough. So what are you going to do? All right, number 24. I'm glad to talk about this album because it's a direct result of this channel. I would not have this album on my list if it weren't for you guys recommending this band. But I'm going to go with the Japanese uh, band, Boris. We did a reaction to them. I, I loved their performance and their album, uh, Pink. They are a very prolific band, so I haven't had a chance to dive into that whole discography. I mean, it's nuts. They have like, I don't know, 20 albums or something. But this one, Pink, this one is interesting. Um, there's some Sabbathy stuff on here. And, you know, I said this on another video one time, but back in the day, uh when i grew up you were either a deep purple or a black sabbath fan and so i picked deep purple that was the band that i preferred and i never really got into black sabbath i'm just not a big black sabbath fan but i appreciate them and i totally get what they're all about and when i listen to this album it's punk but then there's these these very black sabbath oriented sort of proto sludge metal things on here that make me feel like oh that's the kind of sabbath i want to hear i want to hear the kind of sabbath that boris is doing awesome stuff um too many tracks to uh mention but i really really um like this particular album um and then i like to see the live footage of them but uh Pink by Boris. That's a really fun listen, high energy, but excellent playing. And they're just a trio. So if you don't know Boris, check out their album Pink. I would recommend that one, even though I haven't heard most of their disc discography. This seems to be the one that's uh, highest rated. It was, um, what, number 23 on Rate Your Music. So, yeah, way up there. Um, so, so far of all the albums I've listed, this would be the highest one critically. Um, all Music gave it five stars, Pitchfork 8.7. I agree. It's a great, great album. Number 23, a band that I like a lot. Uh, this album, um, not quite as strong as uh, their previous album, but I'm going with Doves some cities um i think this is a step down from their last album but i still love the doves it's very enjoyable um trying to think of the track names on there i just played some of that album yesterday again uh i don't know they just have a certain sound uh that i that i really enjoy 
And I can still recommend this album, Some Cities, cool album cover. Uh, it, like I say, it's a little bit different direction for them, but it's still got um, those, uh, man, I don't know how to describe it. It's not dream pop, but they've got a um, uh, sort of an ambience about their music, uh, but it's definitely rock and roll. So Doves, Some Cities. Coming in at number 22, an album I wasn't sure if it was going to make my list because it's so ADD and it's so all over the map. And it is it is a little bit long. It's hard for me to listen to all 70 plus minutes of it, but I'm going with the Mars Volta, Francis the Mute. This is hands down their most interesting album, uh, Deloused in the Com Comatorium. Probably their best album, but this one is so interesting. I mean, it is so all over the place. You got these real queen slash darkness vibes, but then you've got these uh, ambient things going on. The first track ends with uh, children playing and traffic noises, and then you've got Latin on here and songs in Spanish, and you've got some jazz, you've got some horns. Almost reminds me of some of the horns that Radiohead has done that are very sort of erratic and fast paced. And I have to be in the mood for this album, but Francis the Mute, the Mute is, oh, and the lyrics are just, they're intense. <laughs> they're intense. They're almost a turn off. But you know, it's like, um, I don't know. Francis the Mute is like, I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's like finding a dead animal on the side of the road or something, and you don't want to look, but you can't not look. Francis the Mute is just this album that, you know, I think, okay, that's too much. I can't handle it. And then I'm like, oh, let me listen to that one more time. I don't think there's an album like it. It's, um, it's, it's whacked out. It's a crazy album. Um, you know, I will admit that I will listen to a lot of times I'll listen to half and then later I'll listen to the second half, the big suite at the end there. But, um, this is an album I just can't not listen to coming in at number 21, an artist that usually scores a little higher for me. Um, uh, he's, he's a real regular go-to that's Beck and his album Guero. And I think this album is underrated. Uh, I, I like it. I really like Guero. It's got a lot of really fun stuff on it. So, uh, you know, he, he changes this sound up from album to album. So of course he leaves some fans in the dust, uh, every time he does that, but I, I keep up with him and I always like everything he does. And Guero is a really strong album. You know, not everyone loved it. Let's see. Pitchfork here gave it a 6.6. .6. Oh, by the way, on Francis the Mute, if you haven't seen this, Pitchfork gave Francis the Mute a 2 out of 10. 2.0. I read the article this week. Really interesting. <laughs> you know, they're entitled to their opinion, but I think it's... um. But anyway, back to Guero by Beck. Really well produced, well played, well sung. And it's a fun album that kind of falls between his serious material and his um, really tongue-in-cheek stuff. This is kind of in the in the middle. It's also got some uh, Latin stuff on it, some things in Spanish. So, yeah, I love Guero. So, um as we go through, I might talk about some of the upcoming albums in a little more detail, talk about the tracks. But on this one, I wanted to uh, keep the video short and not get into too many of the song titles. So that's my favorite. I will um, post these at the end of the video. And I also um, always put together a Spotify playlist. So I will do that. I will... Um, if you're interested, you can go to Spotify, and each time I do one of these, I'll add another 10 albums, just highlights. I take about a third of every album um, because it would just 30 albums would be 30 hours of music. So I like to keep the playlist down to about 10 hours, and uh, I will put a link 
to that on my wall buying a reaction spotify page and thank you for joining me and that's it i've got coming up i've got a couple of really big omissions you know i'm sorry about that a couple albums that i'm just not crazy about that are highly ranked uh, but stay tuned for uh 20 through one as we say here in mexico buen dia